No. Oh. Join me for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting, November 30th, 2015. We'll start with public comment. Anyone wishing to make public comment? Seeing none, we'll move to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Wardell? Uh, now I'm kind of all set. I hope everybody had a nice and healthy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. And now it's winter and we're ready to get rolling. <coughs> Mr. Bridal. Yes, we have the uh, tree lighting uh, coming up uh, Friday night yep. at uh, Depot Square. Starts, what, 5.30, I believe, 6 o'clock. And uh, they have all, they're going to be some restaurants there, and there'll be some hot chocolate, and the rec department's going to have their program up with some carols and the hay rides and all that, so it's a fun thing. And then Saturday morning <laughs> at 1 o'clock, uh, we have the Hampton Christmas Parade, so if your traffic's probably going to be screwed up in town for a couple hours on Route 1, but uh, if you get a chance, stop by and see the Christmas Parade. Thank you. Yeah, don't rush winter. It doesn't start till the 21st. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Mrs. <Of> Wolseley. <laughs> yes, um, the fire department received a very nice letter from a lady uh, on November 24th says, Dear Hampton Paramedics, one, on 11-18, you were there to transport me via ambulance to the emergency room following an auto accident. Your kindness and total care was so warm and reassuring. Keep up the good work. We residents of Hampton are fortunate to have such great, skilled, professional people dedicated to the cause. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, it's always heartwarming when the public is kind enough to write thank you letters to the uh, wonderful men and women who serve us in the fire department. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, happy holidays to everybody. The parade's going to be exciting. Uh, this is a great place to be this type of year. And to uh, expand on uh, that, that letter, uh, to all our department heads, uh, to everybody that stood a watch over Thanksgiving, to those that are going to stand watch uh, during the holidays when the rest of us are having a good time, to the fire, to the police. Um, to Public Works and, of course, to uh, Mr. Welch and his uh, command element. Uh, a great job, and we always think about those that are serving us during the holiday seasons and include them in our prayers. So thank you, all those that do that, and uh, it's going to be an exciting holiday season. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next, we have the consent agenda. Also move, Mr. Chairman, the uh, Deputy for Forest Fire Wardens Lieutenant Sean Murray and Fire Prevention Officer William Payne to be appointed. I'll second that. All those in favor, unanimous. <clears throat> Our first appointment tonight is Ed Tinker. Please <clears throat> join us. Thank you. Good evening. Um, two items this evening for your review and uh, app hopeful approval. One, the first is a supplemental uh, property tax warrant. Um, it has to do with three properties that were uh, assessed values were revised due to uh, changes uh, that were discovered after the warrant. Um, the total of those three is uh, $3,875. I'm just looking for, I can answer any questions if you have them. If you would. Questions? Anyone have questions? Do you want a motion, Mr. Chairman, to accept the Supplemental Real Estate Property Tax Warrant 2015-05? Yes, and a second. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. The amount Thank is $3,875. Thank you very much. Um, the other item is the 2015 equalization ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, the preliminary reports have been completed. Um, looking to send those into the state for their uh, final uh, finalization of that ratio. I did submit a uh, form to be signed by the, the board. Um, and currently uh, the preliminary ratio, median ratio will be around 88.7, <clears throat> uh, down a little over 2% from last year, which I guess indicates that the market is still appreciating. 
from last year. So if you have any questions, questions. I can answer those. Any questions over here? No. Um, yeah, I think it would help Ed, if you would explain a little bit because the public really wouldn't know what a yep. median ratio is. Sure. Give us just um, a quick recap. Um, each year between October 1st and September 30th, those are, that's the equalization year, mm -hmm. six months past April 1st, six months before, um, they analyze or we analyze and send that to the state for their final approval, um, all the qualified sales that take place in Hampton. Okay. Um, this year we had, I believe, 424 qualified sales. That's up about 100 qualified sales from 2014. Uh, okay. um, overall, um, you know, we, know <coughs> we know development has been strong, so that, that, uh, that's a good indication of, of the market um, currently. Um, so that, that we do that every year. The ratio, of course, comes out after the year's over, but it comes out around the time of uh, the abatement season and appeal season so that we can equalize using that ratio. Uh, the ratio typically gets delivered around February. So predicated on your calculations of the sales of property, yeah. It appears that property is appreciating still in value. Still appreciating. We're, we're over, you know, this is an average for the entire town, the entire group of sales. Some will, will, will appreciate more than others, or some may depreciate, but on average, uh, a little over 2% this year uh, increase in sale prices in relation to assessments, current assessments. Great. Thank you. So, you're welcome. Do we need to do something with that? We need to do a motion. Yes. We'll Who wants to make that motion? I'll so move that we accept the 2015 Equalization Municipal Assessment Data Certificate given to us by the assessing officer. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thanks, Ed. Thank we you appreciate very much. It. You have a good evening. Thanks. Moving on. <coughs> Next we have Christy. Please join us at the table. How are you tonight? Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. All right, well now that today is the last day of November, I'm here to do my October financials for you guys. And hopefully I will have the November numbers done thank by you. the beginning of next week at the very latest for you, since we're getting close to the end of the year. Uh, this is the 10th report of 2015, and the expenditure target is 83.33%. The month's total income without capital reserve was uh, $703,000. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $270,000, which is over the month's target by $40,000. The other uh, major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $14,000, Building permits at $33,000. Uh, the FEMA reimbursement came in uh, for the storm back in end of January or beginning of February for $41,000. Landfill grant at $62,000. Highway subsidy at $89,900. Uh, departmental income at $69,000. Rice sewer agreement at $17,000. Parking lots at 9700 so we are still making some money in the parking lots, and I think they were open for a couple of uh, shows in November also. Real Estate Trust at 69000 The expense summary at the end of October, the operating departments without debt service, but with open POs were 80.87% of the budget, which is under the month's target by 2.46% or 575000 Overall, the departments as a whole are running under the target of 83.33%. Um, in the town manager, accounts to note there, our supplies and expense line is running over target. Total executive is now over target at 83.78%. Election administration, some accounts to note are under town clerk, computer support, staff development, and repairs and maintenance and under voter registration, supplies, and expenses. In finance, the postage line is now at 94.73%. Assessing some accounts to note our contracted services is over budget by 60,000 and motor vehicle reimbursement is over target 
The department as a whole is now over target at 98.61%. MIS, the four equipment related accounts when combined together are currently at 79.29%, which is $3,400 um, over budget. Financial administration as a whole is over target at 83.54%. Legal outside counsel fees is now over target at $614, or by 614, not at 614. Uh, planning board advertising is now over budget by $2,111. Cemetery contracted services and electric are both over target. Um, parking administration is done for the season. Uh, they came in under budget overall. The police department is at 79.13% overall when the open POs are included. Um, I noted in there a lot of the same accounts are still over target. Um, I won't read them all off again this month. But I did note some new items. Uh, vehicle replacement is now at target because they purchased the um, new cruisers is completed. And support services as a whole is over target at 87.29%. That is a lot of uh, their summer help though, so I'm not too concerned on that line. And also in the police department, the police stations and buildings as a whole is over target at 94.29%. And the fire department is at 78.3% overall when the open purchase orders are included. Um, the account Something new there is the fire stations and building as a whole is now over target at 93.13%. Uh, and public works, highways and street is over target at 97.72%. I feel like we've talked about that one over and over again this year. Most of that's related to snow from last year or from the beginning of this year. Municipal sanitation is running below target at 77.33%. And uh, the new note there is that the transfer station as a whole is now over the target at 98.55%. Animal control is running below target, but the overtime is still over target. It's now at 127.71%. Culture and recreation, some accounts to note are under administration, OT wages, telephone, and uniform expense, and under the maintenance of the parks, um, the electric line there. Of the Warren articles, um, on page 15, you'll note that a lot of those you've seen activity has increased in many of those. Some of them are even completely spent and some of them are getting close to being spent. So a lot of those projects that people voted in favor for have been completed. So that's good news. The 2014 encumbrances are showing that 70% have been expended to date. Um, since this report, though, I believe we've also We've closed out a couple of other ones and we're working on, um, diligently working on the one for the light uh, down at the beach and that was, or down by the uh, beach fire station, that was one of the larger purchase orders making up that percentage there. In the special revenue funds, Fund 24, the recreation, uh, the beach sticker donations year to date equal $15,579 with 21602 dollars being awarded as scholarships. Cable committee, the fund balance continues to run above the 2014 ending balance. Private detail, the current fund balance is below the 14 ending balance by 25,000. Um, EMS, the balance in this account continues to grow and is approaching the $500,000 mark. And in the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in October was $2,400 for a new account balance of $193,900. Um, but the <coughs> board has voted to expend 82,370 of those dollars, so that would leave a balance of 111,600 in that account um, in the wastewater system development charge. And I think that is all. That's the end. Questions, <coughs> Mr. Waddell? Yeah. <coughs> Thanks. Nice report. And it's always nice to see revenues up. You know, the, the permits, the fire department permits that we had changed, those are up considerably, right, for yes. the year. Up uh, from 4,900 to 15,963, which is great. The parking revenue was up, which is great. Parking tickets were up. Not good for the people who got ticketed, but good for the town. 
you know, should plan ahead, I guess. Uh, parking lot revenue is, is really up a lot, and you said there was even more coming in. Probably. Yeah, there was. Yeah, I think there was a couple of shows in November. Yeah. I know is... there was a couple of shows in November, so there'll be some more revenue. I probably won't be large, but. Which is really good. Uh, under, under the, the, you know, you, uh, electric and in, in, in the uh, police department yes. buildings and under the fire department, those are still up, right? Yes. And that's. All of those accounts. I just didn't read them because I've been reading them for several months now. Yeah. But all of the, like, the electric, the gasoline, the diesel, some of the heating fuel accounts, um, and some of those overtime accounts. A lot of uh, different overtime line items uh, and the animal control one um, were all up still. And you haven't done the year-end projections yet? I have not done year-end projections because I'm going to do November numbers first. Okay. But it had increased from the, uh, I think it was it was 71,000 in September, which was our low. I think in uh, October it was in the threes, and it was up to 575. Uh, Fred had put a freezing spend on the majority, on all of the departments. So I think that is reflecting in some savings, the year-end projections. Growing. Overall, we're in good shape right now. Better shape. Better shape. Okay, Better shape. Thanks. <laughs> Next week, I'll tell you a little bit stronger, right. good, or better. <laughs> we're in better shape so long as the weather stays warm and the cold. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, yeah, fine report. Uh, well, like you mentioned, like Jim mentioned, that the uh, fire department fees for the uh, were up about fifteen thousand this yes. year. Yeah, and that's because the fees changed. Yeah. Well, that's because the fees changed. The but fee also, schedule changed. We also have somebody in that department doing, mm -hmm. that's doing yes. a much yeah. better job. Yeah. And and just what they brought in more with this would be the, what covered her, if we decided if if the voters decide to make her full time, would almost cover that additional mm -hmm. cost there. So, uh, that's something to think about. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, as usual, I'm delighted with that wastewater system development charge, money that we never would have obtained uh, for Correct. people uh, putting in dwellings with extra bathrooms and so forth. All of that goes toward the wastewater uh, maintenance of the wastewater treatment plant. And we're coming up on $200,000, hopefully, by the end of the year. Well, it's down to 111000 after all of right. the Right, but I mean the yeah. total receipts. We oh, have yes. spent some, yep. but the total receipts are very positive. On the EMS services, um, on allowance adjustment, 62,652.91. Uh, that's the uncollected for the year. That's the no, that's the allowance. <coughs> we do a uh, journal entry right. to account for any possible write-offs that we may want to do that saying, are going to be uncollectible. Right. It's not the receivable balance, though. Right. It's okay. write-offs to date because the auditors want us to um, make sure that we account for that. It's not necessarily the write-offs that we've done yet. It is a journal entry that's done on a monthly basis based on the outstanding receivables okay. and is making the revenue or the um, fund balance more accurate to what it actually would be right. if we did write off all of the and old people pay against this balance, then it will be adjusted. That will be adjusted if we choose to write up any um, more of the um, outstanding receivables that right. we have at Comstar. Right. Okay, I appreciate that. And uh, Recreation Fund, um, they have a nice healthy fund balance as of the end of October, the 144000 so that will certainly accommodate their warrant article uh, for 2016. On page 15 of 16, Highway Block Grant uh, expires 320. Um, we used 261,247, and we have 6,402 left. Fred, can can Chris use that against his, or piggyback that with his Highway Block Grant for 2016? The warrant article at past town meeting made that a, a contingent item, so it's going to continue into the following year. So he still, <coughs> yes, so he, he still will have access that money. to yes. that money too. Right. Excellent. Okay, and that's it. Very nice. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Bean. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Director. Hey, no questions on uh, your month end financials, but I, I did want to, and I'm not going to ask for any response from you, but just point out to the public the PLT decision. I'm sure everyone's read that. Yes. And um, 
they're going away. I know you're on top of that insurance switch with Mr. Welch, and that's that's uh, a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that'll be cheaper. Of course, that's a budgetary consideration we, we don't have in yet. <coughs> um, and it's interesting when you read this, and I just want to take a minute, because our health insurance rates have gone up dramatically. And in this, um, from Don Mitchell, uh, his denial of the PLT to continue, and that was just that just came out 1123. Um, Health Trust has been paying for PLT's finance department. Um, it's providing information technology services. You know, some people just never get the message. Uh, it's providing human resource uh, services. It's marketing. It's communications. Um, it provides risk control services. Um, and this is to the PLT. Right. And so we're, we're getting health insurance raises. Uh, Dave Lang already did this dance, and uh, Dave was successful. Mm -hmm. But they're still taking money from, which violates the spirit of that whole scenario and the remedy. That's one of the reasons this was denied. They provide risk control services um, to PLT's member relations services. There's been no accounting for exactly how much of that cost has been. So our health insurance premium dollars are subsidizing the property liability trust to the state. So, and yeah. I would ask uh, um, consent from the board on, the, on this issue that we get the health source marketing rep or underwriter or who's ever establishing these rates and have them come down here and sit so we can I've have that face-to-face that -face mm -hmm. with them because that's just not the way insurance is done. That's not the way we pay for things. And I know Mr. Welch is going to be on top of that. But this is, uh, this is another glaring issue. Um, and, and again, Health Trust paid 50% of the PLT Executive Director Parker's compensation mm -hmm. uh, through yeah. June 30th. <laughs> and we're getting health insurance rate increases to pay for this. Um, and it's, uh, it just never ends. And uh, I, would, I would like them, if the board would, to have the, uh, the Health Trust folks that gave us, what was our, our raise? Um, overall, it was 17.3%. And how much in a dollar That's figure? That's like an that average. A ballpark for, for dollar figure, what was that? Oh, it was a big... Several hundred thousand dollars? Oh, yes, that I added back into the budget. Yeah, I don't remember right. it right now, but it was quite a bit. Right, so they need to... Because I did 17.85% of a $2.9 million line item, so... That's oh. that. So, would, would like, uh, you know, I, I know you, you and Fred are on top of that. Yeah, I've been... I've sent several emails. I'm sure... And then um, I even sent one last week reminding him I was coming here tonight, and they might be asked when he was coming. And I'm, I'm probably stealing <laughs> yes. Fred's thunder. I haven't read uh, your manager's report, but I know you're going to give it to us. And then on the um, uh, the pension increase, I would think that we're going to be getting an increase um, on our pension costs. And we had discussed, and the board had said that you wanted somebody, <clears throat> we wanted somebody from the uh, pension system to come down here, because if that's another uh, increase, when does that increase come? Those out? rates are set. Those every two years. Yeah. And when is that? When are we next due for we that? Just, another year to go. Yeah, we have 16 into 17. Right. 16 already. 17. Yeah. So we have. A, a, we won't get any. Because theirs go July 1st to June 30th. So they just um, changed for this July 1st of 15. They'll change again, or they stay the same on July 1st of 16, yeah. and then July 1st of 17 will be the next chance. Okay. And, for those and, to change. And the rate in July did what? For it went uh, up. <laughs> and how much was that? Ball it did not figure. go up that much. I believe, I think fire may have gone up like one, well, probably less than 2%. I'd have okay. to go back and look. They didn't go up a, a ginormous percentage like they did several years back, but okay. they did, all of them did go up slightly. Okay. I'd say between 1% and 2% off the top of my head. Great. Well, you've got just on those three issues that aren't even, you know, detailed accounting issues, um, uh, you're playful. So thank you very much, and I just want to bring those back out. Thanks. Mm-hmm. And, Mr. Chairman, interesting that it was Don Mitchell who wrote <laughs> the decision. Some of the decision is very interesting. That was kind of funny, I thought. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, when you Those read the decision, you. yeah, because uh, if you read it really closely, you would <clears throat> see that one of the reasons they, they declined them to write was the fact that they didn't have sufficient surpluses. Right. And he ordered the surpluses all refunded, so they couldn't have sufficient resources. So <laughs> it's sort of a... 
a double whammy. So the surplus is that they never surrendered to the town. But they did surrender it, and well, they not. apparently surrendered more than they now feel uh, they should have. They should have had. So. No, because we had the gap. Don't forget what two thousand two to two thousand ten or something like that that was never well, settled. Now they're saying that they refunded too much. Right, no surplus this year. Yeah, that came in the health insurance when we got the rates that there would not be surplus. Messy, messy. Thank you very much nice. for coming in tonight Welcome. and staying on top of all of this stuff. Thank it's you. amazing. You do a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have Kathleen Murphy, superintendent of SAU 90. And Frank DeLuca from the school board. Frank, Frank coming up? Because he's not. <laughs> he's bad. <laughs> he's not bad. He's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bashful. We uh, at the school department are also hold, keeping our fingers crossed, keeping this weather the w uh, remaining where it is so that we don't have to deal with all the, the winter weather. But um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and I hope you all had a great, great weekend. And uh, we're back in uh, business with all the kids back in today. And <laughs> so when you word, use the word holiday in our, um, at our places, it, it uh, generates a certain uh, level of excitement. So right. we try to lowball it right now, so we keep it quiet. <laughs> I'm here at your request relative to the, uh, the letter I sent. Do you have a copy of the letter that I sent? Yes. I sent a letter to you back in September. Do you have that? Because I, I brought September some additional. First. We've got the September 29th. One. You all have it? If you need it, I have some I have it. additional copies. Yes, I'm good, please. Thanks. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So back in September, I requested some funding to continue uh, with our with our program on Channel 13 mm -hmm. uh, as part of our uh, agreement, our intermunicipal agreement with the town that we crafted a couple of years ago. And um, in that uh, agreement, it talked about the funding for uh, programming uh, as, as well as support of running Channel 13 for the schools. I, I, I don't want to get into a lot of detail, but we're quite pleased with uh, the results of the work to get Channel 13 up and running. I have to give great kudos to the, to the cable committee uh, who assisted us, uh, as well as uh, your technology director. Um, who was uh, instrumental in helping us work through all of the technology issues, and the, we all had a, had to have a bit of patience as we waited for um, our friends from Comcast to finalize all the <clears throat> appropriate wiring and so forth. And um, but that was completed, and we're very pleased with the results. Uh, we have a, a a great deal of programming for the kids. Um, it starts usually in the morning with programming just um, the, the uh, sort of the agenda for the day and for the week so that uh, we know what's going to be on. All of the meetings are, are on uh, school board meetings, budget meetings, uh, and any kinds of um, business type uh, events are on. But then we really switch over when the kids come out of school at around 3 o'clock. The program changes to um, educational kinds of things for the kids uh, right up through their bedtime. And then we switch back over to uh, the, the meetings. Uh, we've been very fortunate of late uh, to be able to um, show some pretty significant events that have happened. Uh, the first being the, um, uh, we had a uh, community-wide program on uh, bullying. And so we were able to record that and run that for the community. So those folks that weren't able to make that, uh, they were able to see that. Recently, working with uh, departments of the town, the police department, uh, the EMTs, we p put on a program around the heroin opiate um, crises, if you will, that is currently in our state. And it was very well received by the community. We had a great audience, but we also were <coughs> able to uh, record that event. And now, and it's still on and available for folks to see so that there was good information. Um, as you know, we're all engaged in a project. Uh, we're trying to uh, determine what, to what extent uh, Hampton Academy needs renovations. And we've been able to televise those forums where we were seeking community input um, to get a sense of what we need over there. So without Channel 13, we would really be limited relative to our um, ability to communicate. So I hope that you would 
re uh, consider our request uh, for, I believe it was $35,000. I, I've outlined it in the letter uh, to continue to run our station. Mr. Welch, do you have something to say? $36,523 to be precise. Thank you. I and, have that right here. I don't, I don't have a problem with the board approving that, but I think the board needs to understand that uh, at the current ratios of expenses, uh, doing a projection, and it's only that a projection, we're going to run out of money next year, this account. We're going to overdraw the account sometime late in the year and have zero funds available. That's a problem, so you need to think of a remedy um, and one of the things that we've thought of is increasing the portion of the fees received from Comcast, uh, perhaps another 10 to 15 percent to go into the fund. Mm -hmm. So the fund can remain whole. And I think we need to also, in order to, to get by that and not overrun that again, we need to put some sort of uh, an agreeable cap amongst all of us as to what we can do and what we can spend so that we, we maintain where we are within the system. But I have no objection to paying this. We have the funds available. So moved. Second. Uh, questions? Mr. Wardell? Well, I, I just, you know, I agree 100 percent that Channel 13 is a great job and it's really, a, really great to the community. But I think I agree with Fred, too, that we have to look at a way of funding this coming down to the future. I mean, because right now, currently, the franchise fee, 25 percent goes to the cable. Mm -hmm. Yes. 75 percent goes into the general fund. That's to correct. Reduce taxes. That's correct. And I think the school has to get on board with the town if we're going to increase that to bring that to the voters through a Warren article, mm -hmm. if that's what's necessary to do, uh, to make to increase that percentage, so that so that because, you know, it's going to be it's going to be something that affects the, the the tax rate. And if you went the other way and added a percent on to the franchise fee with the cable people, right, mm -hmm. then the peop then the subscribers are paying right. for it. So any way you look at it, somebody has to pay for it. So if we're going to do this, I think it has to be a cooperative effort together to get that through and to get a change. True. Mm -hmm. that, that's my strong feeling on that. Mr. Prydle. A couple of, how, it, would that be a selectman's warrant article, or would it be better to have a petitioned warrant article? Do we need to have a warrant article at all? Yes, you do. Yes, you we do. do. It was set by town meeting. It was set by town it meeting. It should be so. a selectman's warrant article, I would think. I, 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 would I think that's probably the best way to go yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. One of the questions I had was, um, not being a Comcast sub subscriber, <gasps> um, <laughs> I want to thank everybody that is, uh, first of all, but um, is there any plans to um, have the shows available on the web like we do ours? Uh, maybe not live stream, but recorded so that you could go back and watch them? Right. That's what we are. That's what we have been doing. If you okay. notice those big events, they're all, um, you'll see that they're recorded and, and posted on our website. Okay. Um, and we have um, gone into live streaming. We, we did that over the last couple of events and very successful, uh, uh, good reception uh, from the folks at home. So we are doing both of those. We also use uh, the YouTube channel uh, and we post things on the YouTube channel uh, so that it's another vehicle for us to, for folks to see it. Absolutely good. I just, can I respond to Jim's, may I? Yes. Um, we would 100% support the effort to do whatever you folks deem necessary. We don't have the um, authority to do that um, via the, the way the, the, the uh, funding for the PEG is, is uh, situated with the federal law. But um, we, the board has been 100 percent, the school board has been 100 percent behind this effort and have been big proponents, as you know, of, of uh, this vehicle for our schools. So, uh, Mr. Waddell, we would be right there with you to support it and work to support it. Mrs. Walsley. You know, what might help, uh, I would think, is if we got a notice from SAU 90, like we do from our cable committee, on, say, anticipate, if you're, if you're anticipating spending X money mm -hmm. on some function for Channel 13, if we could be notified of that before anything is purchased, it might help us to keep track. Well, they're actually doing that because they've given us a complete list of everything that needs to be purchased for the next year. Oh, good. Oh. It's there. All it's right. attached to the uh, request. 
You're way ahead. What, one of the things that we tried to do is maintain some stability because we also understand that what was available in the pot of money, if you will. And so if, if, you, if you went back to the year before's request, it, it was almost the same amount of money right. within a few dollars. Yep. Um, so we will, um, we have committed to ensuring that we keep this uh, a, as low as we possibly can, knowing that it would ha it would cause some kind of ripple somewhere. Yeah, I, I particularly appreciated the rerun of the uh, assembly to honor the veterans on Veterans Day. But the one thing you didn't capture, because I was in the lobby when the veterans were coming out and the smiles and the looks on their faces, uh, including Commissioner Ladd from the precinct, by the by. And it, it was uh, so neat to see everybody and see those men so happy, because you had, what, at least 50? Yeah, it was very, it's 50 been, veterans, both, both very the veterans well attended. Day. And, and the, uh, the youngsters reading, but the faces on the veterans when they were walking out of the building was really uh, very, very enjoyable. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Superintendent Murphy, great school system, great leadership, and uh, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It seems like you're really on top of it. She is. <laughs> Can, should we talk school, now about the school board? Doesn't fool around. A Warren article. To, should we um, have a consensus? We should be able to get through the minutes real okay. quick. All right. Yeah. You ready for a motion on the minutes? Because I don't have any corrections. Or anything. I'll move that we approve the minutes of November 9th, 2015, public session. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. And I'll move that we approve the minutes of November 16th, 2015. Mr. Chairman, before you do whoop, that, whoop. <clears throat> we found a mistake. Uh oh. Uh, page 10, 3 of 10, uh, item 14, which is the last item on the page. The total should read 191500. Uh, and that does that's not correct in the original minutes, so it should be correct. Wait a minute, 191500. <laughs> ah. So is that a motion? Sure. Yes. And a second. second. With that with that correction. in favor. Yeah. Unanimous. Good. Moving on to the town manager's report. There we go. You want to go to um, the consideration of what you want for a warrant article for Do you want to talk first? about that now? Yeah, that's fine. And, and you might want to, you know, spread that out to the board so that they can have their input. But uh, the record, the consideration should be, I think, to instead of increasing the rates for everybody's cable system in the community, that we use the money that we currently have. Uh, and we readjust that ratio by right. five, by 10 or 15 percent, so there will be f sufficient funds in the future in this particular account. That's a suggestion. So that would be for this year? That would be for next year next because year, it has to go year. through town meeting first. Right. It has to be approved. So less surrendered to a surplus. The Warren article would be for this year. Correct. Yes. That is correct. Okay, questions for the town manager? Do we know what? percentage would, would would do that I mean should we figure out the percentage we're going to need to do so that we're not coming back and five doing or ten we could give you an exact percentage um, one of the thoughts that we had was that some of these costs and expenses continue to go up regardless of what we do so we need to figure out what the exact percentage is and then we need to figure out what the change has been for the last few years and come back with that information so you can make a judgment okay mm, yeah that sounds good to me. It's fine by me. That's good. All right. Any Please. other questions, Bill? No, sir. <clears throat> okay. So uh, you're going to get back to us on that? I will. I'll have the, have the finance department work that out in consideration of the bills and so forth that we've received and, and get back to you with a report from the finance department. Okay. So the town manager's report. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, residents and visitors are respectfully reminded that there is a parking ban on all public streets that, are, that is in effect from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. each night. All violators will be ticketed. So far, they've been doing very good. I, I come through the community, particularly at the beach, where the biggest problem is uh, usually sometime around 6.30 every morning, and um, there's no one on the streets. That's just it's very good. Uh, a reminder that petition zoning articles must be submitted to the selectman's office by 5 p.m., on December 9th. Mm -hmm. 
that time is closing in very quickly. The last day to submit petitioned warrant articles for the annual town meeting for non-zoning subjects is 5 p.m. on January 12th, 2015, 2016. Uh, there are still 97 unlicensed dogs. If your dog is not registered, please see the town clerk for licensing to avoid the summonsing for a court appearance, which is in the process of being repair, uh, prepared. And I, I don't want anybody going to court if they don't need to. Um, we've also received a, a, a few other things since we prepared this, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, some of those deal with budget committee questions uh, and requests. Um, and I think probably we ought to take those up unless you've got questions about the report so far. Because that's my, my, my report. I've got some information from the Budget Committee that needs to be considered by the Board. Okay. Is that the emails that you've been forwarding to us? or uh, Some of these have gone out. I think Christina forwarded some. I forwarded yeah. some, okay. just depending on who was available to do it at the particular okay. time. So. Because um, we have been receiving some information. Yes, you have. Yeah, we try to keep you up to date. So you want to do that now? Uh, unless you have questions no. uh, about the report so no. far. No. Okay. All right. Uh, the budget committee has requested two things. Uh, one is a series of questions from the budget committee subcommittee on the um, finance department, the computer system, and they have a number of questions that they would like to have answered. I know that. Uh, the folks at the uh, in the computer system are a little concerned with some of the questions. Uh, oh, that's the IT subcommittee. That's the IT yes. subcommittee. Uh, some of them deal with things that uh, are well technically difficult. Huh. Um, we don't believe that uh, that we believe that should be reviewed further. Um, find the right piece. I got too many pieces of paper. Is my problem. There, were, there was an extensive list of four or five items, uh, and we, when we get down to, um, here it is, inventory of computers, type, desktop, laptop, etc., principal, location, user, and configuration. Yeah. You uh, did forward that to us because I have a copy right here. Well, we have, a, we have an inventory of all the computers. We, right. We always but I mean, one. you did forward us right. that email. Um, replacement schedule for pol and, and policy for computers, which we have. Mm -hmm. A standard purchasing software installed uh, on new computers. We don't, we have nothing on that. Mm -hmm. uh, number and type of computers purchased in 215, which obviously we have because it's part of the purchasing policy. And the number <coughs> and type of computers for purchase in the proposed 2016 budget. Uh, we haven't even begun to do that. That has to be done by bid. Uh, so we couldn't answer the question even if, <coughs> if we wanted to. Um, we do have a concern that um, we, we, there's a lot of information here that uh, we do not possess. We'd have to make it up under the statute. We're not supposed to be doing that, um, according to the Attorney General. But when we look at this, uh, specifying the user and what configurations are on the user's computer is quite extensive. So what are you suggesting? What I'm suggesting is that we do the items that we can do, mm -hmm. and those items that we can't do, we'll just have to yeah. hold on for a while. Yeah. So we have a consensus here with the board for that? Um, yeah. I agree. Yes. Okay. okay. The second request from the Budget Committee is much more extensive. Um, they passed the consent agenda at their last meeting. Uh, budget Committee has resolved that a, a meeting as soon as possible with DPW Director and the Budget Committee representatives uh, at appropriate DPW locations to review operational procedures and asset status as well as informational discussions of any deficiencies therein. Budget Committee further appoints as representatives and they name the representatives. I'm not going to go into that. Mm -hmm. um, we've also received a, uh, an email specifying that uh, when this is approved by the board that uh, the budget, com budget Committee representatives would like to meet with the Public Works Director to over operational procedures. That's a violation of the statute. Right. Shouldn't make a question about that. Uh, that's not a function of the budget committee. Um, that is a function for the selectmen. Just the <clears throat> way the cookie crumbles, I guess, on the statute. Um, <clears throat> budget committee affirms this is a second request. Budget committee affirms the request that the DRA sent on 9 15 
is vital to the Budget Committee's work and wishes to express that timing is of the essence in receiving the requested guidance. Budget Committee Chairman shall write communications to DRA refer reflecting this affirmation. And I believe she's already done that, so that's been done by them. Budget Committee requests that the Town Manager or from the town manager a detailed explanation of the 2015 actual expenses under contract the contracted services in assessing to include description of property at issue vendors employed uh, for, for said property <clears throat> the amount paid or committed to pay for said property well, first of all i don't know what the said property is but the, the assessor does not report to me if you instruct me to tell him to go ahead and do this i will tell him to do that um, I'm not sure if he has the capability to do all that, but we can ask. And if he does, then we can get it done. Budget committee requests the town manager. Um, from town manager. Uh, budget committee requests from town manager an explanation regarding the appearance of the 2015 employee health insurance being approximately $200,000 under budget. I believe that's already been done. And I believe the finance department has given that now twice to the budget committee. So okay. I, I think that's completed. Number five, budget committee requests the following data in the undesignated fund balance. The 2014 audit results on the cash balance and receivable non-cash balance. Audit's not been received yet. Present data on cash balance and receivable non-cash balance. We have to wait for the audit report. Um, we can estimate, but we can't do anything outside the audit report. Number six, Budget Committee requests that the Town Treasurer appear at the December 1, 2015 Budget Committee meeting to review the present fund status in the Treasurer's custody, in particular those funds related to the Conservation Commission as well as any question that may arise concerning the Treasurer's activities and budget requests. I think she's in Florida. I believe she's away, so it's going to be difficult for her to get here. I don't think that's she's going to take the train up to do it right away. We so. can't tell the treasurer what to No, we can't. Uh, that's something I believe the committee needs to just, just send to her. And I, my understanding was they were going to do that. Good. So those are the six requests that were made. Um, <clears throat> I have a problem with number one. i, I, I got to be very honest with you. Um, oh, I lost my page. Whatever. The um, statute provides that the selectmen run the town and operational procedures are under their review not the budget committee's review anybody wants to read the statute it's very plain um, i just i think that's way outside the, <clears throat> the requirements questions for the town manager mr bridal no i agree with him i think the uh i think uh as far as uh procedures and operational procedures that has that comes under our purview not theirs and uh, but the other stuff the should be a problem shouldn't be a problem so. i should have went to you phil first i'm sorry i abstained on the uh consent agenda i didn't want anyone yelling at me for the budget hi jerry hey, hi brian <laughs> and um uh in, ter in terms of these things where statute prevails statute prevails that's simple um where uh treasurer or town staff can accommodate uh realistically without pulling their hair out and uh um, hurting operational tempo um, of course, we want to accommodate the budget committee. I can't want pull to... my chair out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get some, Fred. Okay. Um, so you know, it's just, it's a no-brainer. It's simple. Cooperate uh, <coughs> where, where humanly yeah. possible. That we, mm -hmm. we don't degrade our operations. Yes, Oper we can. Operational mm -hmm. responsibility is with uh, the board of selectmen, and they have they have broad uh, broad powers under RSAs to uh, secure information so they can develop a budget. So, there you this go. Is what Phil said. <laughs> and I was going to say what Phil said for me too. And yeah, I agree with what Phil said. And I read the RSA today. I went, I went back after I talked to Fred and read the RSA. And I think it's fairly clear about what delineating the the uh, the what each committee has for authority. And I think it's pretty clear that the that the operational is under the selectmen. That, that's totally clear. So I agree 100% with Phil. Sounds like everyone's having what Phil's having. So, do you need any more information? On, on, on those things, Mr. Chairman, I, I, we'll just do the best we can to give answers for those areas that, that concern the Budget Committee and, and not those areas that concern the Board of Selectmen and, and try to move forward in an appropriate manner to give as much information as we can, mm -hmm. we can acquire and send to them. So, I think that's important. Um, we have a lot of detail work we're doing this time of the year we're obviously getting ready for town meeting deliver the session and everything else so 
this will take some time out of that that effort did anyone have any other questions um, for town manager nope. seeing none thank you for your report we appreciate it thank you mr. chairman thank you members moving on to old business Ooh, yeah uh, we have DPW I guess please join us at the table are we working with the warrant articles we've already got Fred or do you have you have one on bonds or stuff that's coming up tonight that's you that's, will get this out tonight yes. okay that? I've got all my other stuff okay no, no paper there we go <laughs> Jennifer Hale and Mike Duby and Mr. Jacobs. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're here, my understanding is we're here tonight for two things. One is to uh, the bonding presentation, but secondly was to um, um, wrap up or right. complete the presentation of the Warren articles that we did the week before. I believe there was one outstanding item that you asked for, and that was you wanted a prioritized list of what we thought or mm -hmm. what I thought of the Warren articles. Yeah. I do have it here. If you yeah, I'll have it sure. I'm sorry. Have Basically, everything you presented to us in order. Yes. I did take a moment to. Uh, uh, it's a, two-page uh, cover memo, and then I took the, uh, the Warren articles, uh, Thank you. the complete list of them uh, with their amounts, and uh, listed them basically from 1 to 10, Very one being the one, one that we feel uh, is most necessary all the way down to number 15. Okay. There were four of them or items that were considered before as Warren articles. Um, that we started as Warren articles that are now on being for the bond presentation. And I keep those, kept those at the bottom of the, the list on the third page. Um, so you can see that the, the item that we consider most important is the DPW vehicle purchase, the two uh, uh, plow trucks uh, and replacement of the one ton truck, uh, followed by the highway block grant because that directly leads to um, what we would do for paving or projects this coming year. Uh, third would be the sidewalks. Fourth would be the seawall replacement, uh, at least the engineering portion uh, uh, for 85,000 and the household hazardous waste collection. Those first five items are action items or things that directly impact our ability to produce for the town, if you will, accomplish things for the town maintain roads, collect hazardous waste, things of that nature. Uh, items six down through um, nine, the three new employees, uh, the unusual weather event, uh, the 100 cubic yard refuse trailers, uh, and replacing the solid waste compactor are things that if they didn't get done, there's, there's a number of people in town that, if the UL, wouldn't see any difference in our daily operation. But if, in fact, they did get done or did get approved, for instance, the additional refuse trailers, we wouldn't have the issue that we ran into this year of, you know, potentially having to drop uh, refuse on the floor. We were about one hour changeover between um, July 4th weekend, uh, three-day holiday, a lot of people at the beach. I think we collected almost close to an extra 100 tons in that three days. Um, it shows 88 tons for the month, but we we collected most of it in that weekend. We actually ran out of trailer space because two of the trailers were down. So those are the kind of things there. Unless you went to the transfer station or you saw, um, like for instance, if the center compactor, it's which is item number nine. Uh, is, is we keep nursing it along and nursing along, welding new plates to it, uh, replacing the, or upgrading the hydraulics. Unless you physically went to the transfer station, you'd never see that. So these are how do want to, uh, six through nine are considered, um, they're essential items. They're still critical items, 
but they would not shut us down tomorrow. But they would and should be gotten taken care of. A lot of these Warren articles come from the first month I was took over as director. Fred said to me, I need a CIP from you and you know, don't hold back. Let me know everything that needs to get done. And that's what you got. <laughs> so some of these things, the six through nine, are, are part of those. Are the, these are essential items. You know, that item nine, that solid waste compact, has been there since 1994. It's amazing the thing still runs. Uh, but when you go down beside it and inside it and look at it, it, it looks like old iron sides with the number <coughs> of welds we've done on it. Um, items 10 through 15 are things that um, we've identified that, that need to get done, i.e., um, we need to replace, uh, item 10 was to replace 147,000 uh, for, it was part of the dam project, the, the Mill Pond Dam, which we're going to go forward with, but we're 147,000 short on that particular project for getting uh, the related drainage under High Street taken care of at the same time. We lost a, a grant application because we didn't proceed forward two years ago uh, of 140,000. Uh, the, the truck loading snowblower. I, I am probably, uh, along with the other people in this room, we're praying very hard. I look at the weather report a lot. I really hope it doesn't snow like it yeah. did last year. If it does, I need a piece of equipment like that. We need a piece of equipment like that. Uh, the area down at the beach is changing. It's becoming a four-season community. We are eventually going to have to have a piece of equipment like that to, um, to keep those streets clear. Um, for safety reasons, uh, for snow fighting reasons, uh, for policing reasons. Um, our public works building, I article number 13. It's further down the list. It's one of those things that we should be taking care of that. We've got rust spots uh, in the side of the building. Here, was it late October? We had a storm that it rained from the beach coming in. Mm -hmm. It forced the water up the roof. It came in our office. Um, the building, you know, was originally built in 67 with the addition that we're in put on in 89. Am I, if my memory serves me correctly, it's about those, those time periods. But we have door jams that we need to replace. They're, they're literally some of them have rusted right off. Um, the outside of the building needs to be painted. We've got major gaps <coughs> where air is coming in. Um, we're expending money for uh, heat that we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't be expending. Um, so we need to start putting in money into that building. Uh, that was one of those things identified as Fred said, tell me everything in the CIP you need. And this is a result of it. So um, the dump carts at the transfer station, it's a, something I identified as a safety issue. It's not critical that it get done today, but it is a, a potential safety issue. I'm trying to prevent someone from falling over the, the wall or falling from our upper tipping area into a trailer, whether it be half full and, and have, you know, safety pr things protruding up or it be empty and you'd fall 13 feet. Um, I think that's what you hire me to do is to see these issues, bring them to your attention, and then hopefully we can all find funding solutions for them. Um, so I did what you asked uh, from 1 to 10. 1 to 15. Um, we're big people. We understand that the taxpayers and you as a board of selectmen uh, representing them have to make a, a determination of what can reasonably brought, be brought forward and what can reasonably be funded. And we, I won't have issue one way or the other wherever you decide to draw the line. Did that answer your question yeah. that you asked? Do we want to ask questions or just jump right into this? So would it be jumping into one by one or? Yes. Well, you, he's here for his, the bond too, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Why don't we go over the bond first and mm, then? Yes. Well, we've just talked okay. about all these all things. Right. Well. Um, so. In. Why don't we, mm -hmm. should we go over them as the priority? 
It's already an established list. We might as well use it. Yes. Okay, so number one is the DPW uh, vehicle purchase. To uh, Mr. White. <coughs> Be deciding Russing, how you cough right in my chair when you said that. <laughs> uh, are we asking questions? What are we? Well, do you, do you feel we need to ask questions? Or do you just want to vote um, whether to bring this forward? Well, you know, I have to rely upon the uh, the advice of the, of the director. You know, I mean, so I mean, he's there. They're there. They've seen the vehicle. <coughs> you know, they're. They're working with the vehicles on a daily basis. They they know what the town needs, so I, you know I have to go with with his. So I, I would go for it. Yes. Yes. And uh, Mr. Bridle. Yes, he uh, he brought through a list. He brought his reasons in of why he needed those vehicles replaced. He's talking about vehicles at a 1988, <coughs> 1989. Right. Um, and uh, they have outuse. Outuse their usefulness. Um, <laughs> they're costing more and more every day to repair, and it's harder and harder to get parts for them. They're almost 30 years old. It's it's time uh, that they're replaced, and that's what he's uh, he's looked at all his vehicles. That's what we we pay him to to do is him and his uh, staff to to tell us what their needs are. He's told us these are three right vehicles that were that he wanted to replace and. Uh, um, I think we have to have faith in him. To uh, he brought them forward, and we need to go with them. I got too many warrant articles here. I'm trying to find the. I'm coming on to the public works now. I want to see the actual wording. Um, mm, good grief! We got too much stuff here. That's why I asked if we had his. For tonight, um, just I'll be, happy, I'll be happy to comment while yeah. Selectman Wolsey looks. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, going through this. Thanks for your work and coming back in. And uh, we had a discussion the other night, and the board voted um, on a Warren article. We've got uh, 21 million dollars uh, in the bank um, that we're not going to use, um, and. Um, there could be a citizen petition warrant to do that. I'm not going to sponsor that because uh, I'm a selectman, and I, I, unless I felt uh, totally compelled, like I was going to give my life um, for that issue, uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then we've got uh, four or five million dollars in the und undesignated fund balance. Taxes have just gone up. For many people in this town, with the reevaluation, their taxes are going to go up way high, and uh, they're not going to be happy. And uh, Nobody is, and they're, they're not people that don't think they should support infrastructure. Uh, we have employees that uh, are in negotiations right now looking for a pay raise, and uh, we can't satisfy everybody. And I'm, I'm continuing while Mrs. Wilsey yeah. looks. Just Go tap right me ahead. on the shoulder and tell me when to shut up, I've got Mary Louise. Two million so, um, articles here. I, I, I will look at uh, a very limited um, uh, Christmas list, if you will, from all department heads going forward on, on these these uh, issues. Um, this DPW vehicle purchase uh, was described that uh, maintenance is eating up an incredible amount, and it would be foolish not to. So that's so why you're going with that. I am, and just in terms of uh, going forward on the rest, um, the uh, the little eraser is going to come out at least one okay. from my thing. Thank we'll, you. We'll take them one by one. Thank this you. Is Give me the vehicles. I think I had them marked in here. The three Good. that you're trying to replace. Oh, I've got a 36, 42, and 45. Correct. At least I've got it on my rolling stock. And by the way, I have asked time and time again for this board and the public works director to sit down and review the rolling stock, and I don't see that well, done yet. What about this one? This well, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> okay, well, so we bear with answer. me. I, That's what we're here doing right now. That's very nice. Okay, you've got the the one-ton dump truck, the Chevy, 2001. You've got the Mac, uh, which is bigger, I assume. They're both Macs, yeah, right. bigger. Okay. Um, you've got, and I don't know what in, in relation to this, but you've got the two Kodiaks, um, 15,000 miles on each of them, 2006. 
Will they? Can they be used? One of the things that I was working on this afternoon, and I think it goes directly to the point that you're trying to raise, and, right. and that is that all the heavy pieces of equipment, the six wheelers, yes, either the Kodiaks, a Mac, or an International, yep. or whatever, yep. are primary snow removal vehicles. Okay. They're assigned, they're, they're assigned primary routes. Within our fleet, we only have one spare vehicle, and currently that is out with a transfer case that's broken. And Fred tells me, we're, I'm hoping Santa Claus comes early and we find the $2,000 and we repair the transfer case yeah. and I have it as a spare. But right now, I have routes assigned for every single piece of equipment. The only one that doesn't have a route is, is Dennis's truck, 29. But to be honest with you, he uses that to respond out in the field to those people that break a hydraulic hose yeah. or my windshield wipers just snapped and they're somewhere off in the marsh. Can you bring me two windshield wipers? So every piece of vehicle, short of what I drive and what um, Jennifer drives, likes to, um, is assigned a route. It, it, it has a snow fighting function. Um, so all we're asking to do is replace really three of those primary snow removal vehicles with newer vehicles. Okay, let me put it to you this way. Yep. You've got, then, and this is the one that really gets my goat, the f number 43, the Freightliner, 2001. It's got 28,000 miles on it. That vehicle was purchased. People didn't want to drive it. It sat rotting in the marsh. It's all rusty. You know it. I know it. I've seen it. I go down there a lot. And that's sitting there as part of your inventory. We, we've got $5 million, and I appreciate the rolling stock list because I've been through this. But we have a total of $5,113,540 in inventory and rolling stock. We can't keep carrying that much. We only have 4.3. 5.9 is the replacement cost. Tonight right. we're well, voting for if this Warren article is going I'm, to be. I'm not voting for this Warren article okay, because, so then you're not voting. because okay. we, need to you. we need to streamline. The taxpayers are okay. paying for this. We have four. I'm not done. We need to streamline the operation of our vehicles in public works. And it's accumulated. It's nothing that Chris has done since April. But we need to streamline these vehicles. You're an engineer. Mm -hmm. You're not an auto mechanic, I guess, although I'm sure you know your way around vehicles. But we need to have an evaluation of these vehicles. I have begged all year for a, just sitting down and doing a discussion of the rolling stock. The, Mrs. Wolseley, the, the we list, are voting on this right now. I want to finish the, the business that, that we're here you gave doing. Us Mrs. Wolseley, are excellent. I want to make sure that I, I understand what's happening here. You're well, voting I'm against it, right? I'm trying to understand right? what's happening okay, here, Okay, you're too. voting against so it. The list is excellent, so I am voting and I appreciate for it. it. So we have but. four to one against for that one. Number two, four. we have the highway block grant. Mr. Waddell. I mean, be careful, don't open your mouth. <laughs> Do you want to see this? Yes, one no, I'm forward? sorry. I'm just going, I'm just <laughs> getting myself together here. Yeah. <clears throat> Number two is, is, is the uh, items two through four. Is that where item we're, two is? Right now we're on highway block, block grant. Number two. Right there. That's your paving. Do you want that to go yes. through as a warrant yes. article? Yes. Mr. Bridal. Yes. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, with the stipulation that we have at least several streets on there, primary streets that Chris is comfortable really need to be done so the public has some idea of what the focus is going to be when we are doing these projects. Mr. Bean. Yeah, just real quick, Director. Uh, at the very bottom of that graph that you gave us, offset by state highway block funds, uh, yes. this is part of that. So the net on this 643, you're basically chopping off 300 grand. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So I'm for it naturally. Thank you. 
and I am for it. So sidewalks. with that is five in, in favor. Number three is sidewalks. Mr. Waddell. Yes. Mr. Bridal. You know, hopefully we can see some more community involvement like we did this year with the, with the sidewalks. That, uh, uh, that worked out well with us, but we do need to start working on our sidewalks. We have many of them in town that are, there are serious trip hazards in, and, and uh, we've gone so many years without doing anything to sidewalks in this town uh, that I think we need to go with it. So, yes. Mrs. Wolsey? We still have 20000 as of the uh, finance director's report at the end of October that hasn't been spent on sidewalk. And personnel are a problem here, Chris. Is that not true? Or would you have to hire out? No, we, we hired out this year uh, a guy by the name of Dana Anderson. He trained three of our staff yeah. and, and helped them get equipped. We did buy uh, out of the sidewalk fund, sidewalk mm -hmm. equipment. Right. Uh, the screeds, the floats, things of that nature. So they're all prepared in the future uh, to, matter of fact, to move on to Toll Ave would, would, would be my game plan oh, yes. in the spring. I would do the same thing that we did this year. Uh, have all three departments or the sections work together. Sewer and drain did the demo. Highway did the uh, uh, preparation, sub-base preparation, and the, the building, uh, my two building personnel combined with someone from Mike's uh, division who has a lot of building trade experience, the three of them would put, put the sidewalks back in. So this is re replacing, restoring, and sealing concrete sidewalks? The newer sidewalks that are up for resealing, we would reseal. For and instance, how frequently should concrete sidewalks be resealed? If they're not resealed in the first year, there's no sense in wasting the money for it afterwards. So we're not going to be doing any resealing at all? I would, there's no town. I don't have a town-wide resealing program in, envisioned. Ridiculous, but we've got to do it. Uh, so as long as you as you have access to sufficient labor to do the projects, I would expect to see all of this spent. Yes. So you're going with that, yes. Mrs. Wolsey. Assuming that Mr. it's going to be spent. You say there's twenty thousand dollars in the account now for that. Right now, it's sitting in there. I'm asking the director, please. Yeah. The, yeah, and it's one of those. Thanks. That's that's fine, and uh, I'll be voting no uh, sidewalks at forty-five thousand six hundred fifty. So, and I am going to go with the sidewalks. So, uh, that is four, four one. to one. And next is the seawall replacement, Mr. Waddell. Question on that: If that were to fail. How much damage would be done down there in a storm type situation? You know, I mean, the waves are coming <coughs> over there constantly, anyways. The wall? Several hundred thousand to a million dollars would be the damage that would be, and and that's that that volume of water could, and that's close to failing, isn't it? Or is, what well, what shape is it in right now? <laughs> we have it short. We have it shored up, but um, my expectation is that if it's a rough winter. We, it could all just fall right into the ocean this spring. Um, the, the, the game plan is to secure it, use por a portion of this money to secure it, probably uh, skim coat it uh, so it doesn't totally fall apart, and use the remaining money to get the a full engineering done that can be fully bid that you have a solid price on. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of edging on this one. <laughs> Just the engineering that's going to be done is the preliminary design because remember right. this goes back to the discussion. Does it need to be a full replacement or does is it a repair situation? Because obviously the cost differential there. So the idea is that this money would do your geotechnical, it would do the survey that you need, it would include the repairs um, f until we get the design bid and those because type of things. Make it, you could do something to make it look right. better. And work better. The looks will be uh, on the side, but to work better, yes. Okay. Yeah, the work better is what I'm. Yeah. Right. I don't care so, about the look better. The work better yeah. being right, living right down there. Um, and people will probably ask, though, why wasn't it done when the state was? I know it's separate from the state wall, but I know people will say, wouldn't it have been cheaper to do it when the state did the uh, was doing their repair? They they, they were the state was paying. Um, 30, yeah, 33,000 off. What was it? It was something like a 
foot? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. 33,000 a foot. Ours is about four feet lower than theirs. And when they, when they recapped theirs, they had a machine that literally blasted the concrete off, and they had rebar to, to work off or attach the wall to. We're four feet show, shorter. We have no rebar to attach to. Yeah. Um, now that we're the lowest section, if a major storm does come, the, the, you know, what do they say, you're only as strong as your weakest link. That section of wall is the weakest link. A and so the, the idea is to make it <coughs> as tall as and as strong as the other sections. We weren't ready to, to have the state's contractor jump on top of our wall. Okay. There would have been nothing to hold on to. I mean, I just, I know people will be yeah. wondering why it wasn't done. Mind. And just like this state as well. I mean, if you recall the last few summers, I believe it, they do a segment at a time, yeah. you know, because yeah. you only can take on so much right, at right, once. Right. But you know, everybody's an expert. Yeah, everybody. Understood. <laughs> so I'm for it. for it. Mr. Bridal. Well, that wall is, is totally different from what the state wall was too. Yes. That, that, that wall was put in primarily to support the Coast Guard station that was there, right. and the seawall that was there was put in back in the when they put the metal wall in and then covered it over with the metal. So it was right. it was totally different, and it was actually two different sets of walls. Mm -hmm. I think we need to. I, I think for eighty five thousand dollars to look at it, to get at least get it so that we can hold what's there for the time being. Um, I mean, when originally we were looking at one point one million dollars, I was hesitant on it. But the 85 just to at least get this thing so that we can find out and find out what our true costs are and that's the thing whether it's going to be the 1.1 1 .1 or is it going to be 2.9 depending on what needs to be done to this right. wall so we're so, putting you down for yes wanting that. mrs wolseley yes but that this is misleading it's the engineering study this is not replacing the right. seawall right. and that has to be made very clear to the public I'll go along with it because we're going to mm. have to do it Absolutely. But we need to specify that. Mr. Bean. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director, Mr. Welch, thanks for uh, fine-tuning this approach. Uh, good job. A lot uh, easier to handle this year. I am for it. And I also am for it. So that's five and four. And number five is household hazardous waste, 20,000. Mr. What else? Is there any way you could that you could do it? A, a private concern could do that. I mean, it, yeah, people would have will. to. We do. We do hire out a. Yeah. But I mean, do, people pay when they bring their stuff rather than bring it for free. The rate and the rate is uh, they get five hundred dollars to show up to mm -hmm. set up, and then they charge thirty eight dollars a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, the twenty is because I don't know how many is the twenty is what we paid in dues last year to the fifty three B district. I don't know how many people are going to show up. 150, maybe. Um, and we are, have sent out some invite letters. We're trying to share the costs with other communities. Um, so in the end, we'll only spend for whomever shows up. But it, it is $38 a car mm -hmm. and up to five gallons of paint and how many TVs and if we didn't have this, what other options do they have? <laughs> well, None. throw it in the woods. Yeah, they d they don't have many other options. Uh, earlier this summer, I watched, I followed a guy, uh, <coughs> came to the transfer station on a Tuesday with a nice wicker chair in the back end. And he turned around and left. And I said, great, he'll come back tomorrow. Tuesday afternoon, I see the wicker chair over by the um, skateboarding park. Mm hmm We've, we've got two mattresses that we already pulled out out of the woods next to Hard, Hard Arts Way. Yeah. I'm thinking that I'm going to spend, if we don't do it, I think I'm going to spend the fifteen or 20000 going around town picking up tires, picking up paint canisters, picking up mattresses, picking up other waste. Yeah. Or we're going to see it in the wastewater stream at the plant. So Mr. Waddell says yes, Mr. Bridal. Yes. And Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, this should be an operating budget item, by the way. And Mr. Bean. Yes. And I also say yes. So there's five for that. Number 
Six is the three new DPW employees. Mr. Waddell. <clears throat> That's a tough one. No employees, because no employees come with benefits and the whole thing. And we, I mean, other people have asked for new employees and we haven't gone there. I mean, I know you need them. <laughs> Go around the rest and then I'll give my vote. Mr. Bridal. He needs them. We do need them, but we also got to look at what the taxes are in this town. And I think uh, we need to hold off one more year. Mr. Bridal says no. Mrs. Wolseley. I'll say no as well, mainly because of the state and the pension system and also, of course, the uncertainty in the uh, health care in the next couple of years. Mr. Bean. I do not support three new public employees at the uh, Public Works. Mr. Waddell. No. No. And I also say no. So that's five against. Number seven, seven is the reserve fund for unusual weather. Mr. Waddell. I just think that that's a, an insurance policy. I mean, I, I would vote for that. I mean, I, I just think that putting that money in there and then you have it built up, you have it. You know, we were talking about buying an insurance policy and paying the insurance company and giving them the money to hold on to and <coughs> bet with. So I, I could go with that one. Mr. Waddell says yes. Yes. Mr. Bridal says yes. Mrs. Wolseley. No. Mrs. Wolsey says no. Mr. Bean? Negative. And I also say no. So that one is two to three, so against. Number nine is, or number eight is two 100 CY refuge trailers and one yard horse. Mr. Waddell? I'm going to say no. I'm going to go with the director's priority list. Mr. Bridal? <clears throat> um, I'm just afraid we're gonna we're gonna start collecting more trash, not less. Those, how old are those ones we have now? They were bought in 2012. 2012, so they're <laughs> three, four years old. <laughs> and uh, I, and as far as the yard horse, we don't have the, the biggest problem we have is we don't have a vehicle that can push that that stuff out. If you do have a fire in it, right? We had a fire in it this year, and we had to cut a hole in the top of one of them. Mm. Yeah. Get into it. So I, I, I think we need to go with it. So you're saying yes. yes. Yep. And Mr. Mrs. Wolseley. Now these are the ejection trailers, right? I don't think we should have bought the ejection trailers in the first place, and I don't think we should buy any in the future. I think that they should so be you're saying rented. No. So I'm saying uh, no <coughs> on that one. Mr. Bean. Negative. He says no, and I also say no. So that's one, four, um, four against. Next, to replace the um, solid waste compactor. <clears throat> Mr. Waddell? That's the one you said you could get by another year? Yeah. I'm going to say no. Mr. Bridal. Get by another year, then let's try to do it. Mrs. Wolseley. Okay. Mr. Bean. Negative. And I also say no. Uh, next, we have the High Street culvert, Meadow Pond and drainage. Mr. What is the potential there for the road collapsing of the road? I mean, in a major, major, major storm, what is the potential for getting, costing us way more than it would cost to fix it? Well, it, it already stood up to the, you know, there's a, to the watermark event, which was the Mother's Day event. Okay. So um, it, it proved itself. How many of those it can stand up to? You have to be a betting man. Um, there again, when we, when we did this CIP and this prioritization, um, there's, there's some risk assessment in this. You know, at, uh, I think I'm at a higher risk for somebody dumping hazardous waste 
in and around town and needed that than I am that particular culvert failing. May, could it crack? Could I, you know, maybe I have to spend 20000 in repairs? Yeah. Blown out? Probably not. Yeah. But it eventually is going to need to get done. The other thing is it's also tied to the, uh, you do have it tied to a standing approved article, which is the Mill Pond project. Right. So it leaves us a little short, and we are, he we are going to be sol soliciting RFQs for final design. So um, there may be half part of the project that we draw the line on, but it would have would be nice to get this all done at the same time, then it's done, done. I'm going to say yes. Mr. In full Bridle. disclosure, I live there. <laughs> Mr. Bridal. I think to get that project done and completed, we need to, to put it through, so yes. Mrs. Wolseley. Final design of what, Chris? The decommissioning of the dam or no, the replacement no. of the dam? Replacement. replacement. And, and this was 147500 was right. grant money that we were in. Only for the decommissioning? No, only for the culvert replacement. Right. Only for the culvert replacement in conjunction with the decommissioning? No, only no. for the culvert replacement. The state gave us an incentive if we decommissioned the dam, they would give us an extra $147,500 yes. right. to replace the culvert. Right. Didn't have anything to... If you look at the engineering data on the replacement or the non-replacement of the dam, mm -hmm. in both cases, with the current culvert, it's going to surcharge the road. In other words, the road's going to be underwater at I, that culvert location. I understand. The culvert won't work. I know what the culvert is, and I know what it does up there. Right. But, but I but didn't hear any... But that's all that did. I didn't hear any discussion of that in conjunction with the second Warren article that went for the rebuilding of the dam. So yeah. we lost the money in 2014. There was 200... And we didn't decommission. The, the, the Warren article was two hundred for $250,000. If we decommissioned, the state would give us $147,500 in revenue to, in fact, supplant that amount of money out of the 250000 For the culvert. Right. Right. For the culvert replacement. Had right. nothing to do with the dam replacement. It's a separate warrant. I'm not article. saying the dam replacement. I'm saying the decommissioning. We lost that grant because we didn't do what the public told us to do by means of decommissioning the dam. The grant is gone. There's no more grant. So if we the do this, the public has voted to do the dam. If we public voted twice, once to decommission okay, Mrs. and once Wolsey, to Okay, Mrs. how are you voting tonight? I am not going to go for this okay, until so we until no. we sort that Mr. out. Mr. Bean, just to make it clear, nope. linkage between the dam and this hundred and forty-seven thousand two separate issues. No. Uh, can I speak yeah. to the director, please? <laughs> Thank you, Select Wolsey. Yeah, there's a grist mill in between, so yes. So that there is linkage between these. Very densely developed there. Um, Mr. Welch has talked about perhaps uh, could lose a road. He's got a little bit of DPW background, too. I support it. Thank you. And I support it. So that's four, four, one against. All right. Next we have Road Improvement Capital Fund Reserve. Mr. Waddell. Can you just explain that one again? Can somebody just? Road Improvement Capital Reserve is where they put 300000 Right. It's the existing fund. It's capital reserve. Right. You've got a... 900000 900000 right. right now. Yeah, at the end of December 31, yeah. when Christy gets done... Every year. ...the magic. We do um, it every year. It's something that usually is voted for. Right. Yeah. To put has, it has been voted for. Mm -hmm. I'll go over right. that. Yes. Yes. Mr. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, we need to keep building that up Mr. for big Bean. road projects. Negative. Negative, and so, and I'll um, vote for it also. So that's uh, four to one. Okay. And next, we have the purchase of the truck loading snowblower. Negative. Negative. Uh oh, we really, really, really need that. 
So how are you voting? I am absolutely voting for it. Mr. Bean? Negative. And I'm voting negative also. So we have four, one, four against and one four. Next we have public works building improvements. Mr. Cordell. I'm going for, for that. Mr. Bridal? I think this should be in, in the operating budget ah. with the caveat that the way things have gone in this town over the past seven or eight years, if it was in there, we would just continue to get a, a non-budget, so I'm going to go for it. it. needs to get done. Mrs. Wolseley? Nope. should be in the operating budget. Mr. Bean? Negative. And I also am negative. So it's two to three against. Next, we have the purchase the dump carts transfer station. Mr. Waddell. That's low down on your priority, right? It's a safety issue, but it is lower in my priority. I'm on a risk factor from the safety issue. I've only known one person that's fallen this in the in the four years since I've been here. He stubbed his toe and went headfirst into the compactor inside the station. Um, but uh, I think to combat the safety issue, we just have to be, the transfer station staff has to be more uh, diligent um, in keeping people off the, the cement wall when they, when they dump. But eventually, my fear is somebody's going to trip and take a big header. I'm negative. Mr. Bridal. Not this year. Mrs. Wolseley. That wall needs to be rebuilt or reinforced, and maybe you need to put pipes in front of it to prevent people from backing into that. That wall never should have been destroyed. So that's never. a no. That's a no. Mr. Bean. Negative. And I also negative. So next we have the King's Highway Drainage Engineering Study for 50000 <clears throat> Mr. Waddell. For Mr. Bridal. Not at this time. Mrs. Wolseley? No. Mr. Bean? Negative. And I is, I'm also negative. So that's 4-1. Four four, one. One, yeah, four, right. So thank you for all the work that you've done on this. And uh, we wish we could vote for all of them. And we hope that people do vote for all of the ones that are going forward. And we want to go on to the uh, yes. But before we go on, I just, yeah. if I can just make one statement. I mean, the sad thing is that none of this is frivolous. That's right. And none of this is, is spending money that shouldn't be spent. It, the problem is that things get put off and put off and put off and put off, then they come by with a huge list. So at some point, we really have to start addressing how to fix this infrastructure around this town. This is a Thank problem you. that all of the boards of selectmen before have had the same problem. Um, Mrs. Wolseley? Not, well, not only that, but there are, are years, many years, when these <laughs> problems were well known and not addressed in-house. So it's not necessarily that they've been not funded or whatever. This is an ongoing problem. Hmm. If I could just close by saying thank you for at least discussing them and having an open and honest back and forth. Uh, I felt like in some respects I was the, the messenger bringing the bad news, <laughs> but you've made it um, professional in that we have an open and honest discussion and you, you've decided what the voters should see, can vote, should vote on, and I appreciate it. We, well, we appreciate We appreciate our professionals that have come in here and said all these things. We're going to continue with this 2016 <coughs> Warren article. Okay. And um, I can see that she's got quite a show planned. <laughs> Part two of last time's show. Uh, so this one is the sewer bond. Uh, basically, it is all the wastewater treatment plant projects uh, grouped together uh, because many of them use the same resources. You'll have the same electricians, same pipe layers. Um, so when you're bundling those services, obviously one mobilization is going to be cheaper than four and all those other great things. So basically, this is the Warren article. It's the sewer bond for the necessary upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant. 
Uh, in the sewer bond, there is four components. So I'm going to walk through each component, but the four are basically the installation <coughs> of a new septage uh, receiving area um, and a new grip box for its takeoff. Uh, it yes. includes a new location for a wash down area and the connection of that area to the new septage receiving uh, station so that the wash down gets the proper treatment that's required under regulations. Uh, it also includes the installation of new pumps, drives, uh, reducing system for the plant recycle water. Currently, we wind up treating our recycled water that's treated, and then we recycle it and we treat it. And you can imagine this keeps going and keeps going. So there's ways to uh, separate this recycled water um, that is not only better from a money standpoint, as we'll get into, but also an operations standpoint. And then the last component here is an emergency generator for the plant aeration system. Um, I'm hopefully going to go through this quick so you're not tired by the end on the last one because in reality this last uh, component here is exactly that it's emergency power for our aeration system yes uh, so what is the septage receiving station this is a little bit uh, for the people at home but this is part of the wastewater treatment uh, process uh, we treated 1.4 million gallons of septage in 2014 uh, we receive municipal septage. This is the septic tanks, uh, the haulers, the guys who go clean out the septic fields. Um, this material that they're bringing to the plant includes lots of other, you know, I'm going to use the scientific word, gunk, uh, that really uh, messes up the, the plant as it goes through the processes. So that's why we need yeah. to have the receiving station, why we need to get these gunk particles, the, the hair, the plastics, the grease, everything out of there. Um, because it does clog the pumps, the valves, yeah. uh, and basically when it gets through our system to this aeration that we'll talk to at the end, um, it, it decreases the effecti effectiveness of it. So this was a revenue generation uh, area for us. I think the number is 110,000 last year. So we they have to pay to dump the septic. Mm -hmm. right. right. So last year, $110,422 in tipping fees. Uh, we take in for the septage from the septage receiving area. Uh, basically, how it works, you'll like the little pictures that I have there. It goes into the truck and then it comes out of the truck uh, into a big holding area that is out behind the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, there is a screen in that area where this organics and the debris and the hair all get caught on. Then manually, the people who are disposing of it have to then rake that off yeah. and then sort of walk it gingerly over. Um, to the grip box that is at the rear. Um, that grip box also needs to be replaced. It's supposed to be weather and, and water tight. Mm -hmm. um, it is so old, it, it's rusting out um, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, in this area where the septage goes into, um, we use the plant recycle water to constantly flush it through. So as you can imagine, it's constantly going continuous usage of water. Uh, and then from here, it goes to the headworks of the treatment plant. So this is sort of the pre-process for anything that isn't coming in by a, one of our force mains gravity lines um, uh, from the rest of town. So why does it need to be reproved? Uh, we're not getting out the sand and the gunk and the debris. There's just so many fines and everything that are coming through from the system that we have um, that it is affecting our equipment. Um, we're spending over $8,000 a year. This is that treating the treated water over and over and over again. Um, we're clogging the punts, and then there's a picture of the box on the bottom right. You can yeah. see the bottom. Uh, it's over 10 years old and needs to be replaced. Uh, so this next component that ties into the septic receiving area is the wash down area. Uh, currently, we don't have internal space to wash down the vehicles. Uh, it's not, it needs to be a designed area. You need to understand that once you wash, whatever it is you're washing off the vehicles, you can't just flush it down the drain. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to do that. Um, as part of our maintenance of our vehicles, I've heard it in here, we've heard it in our office, you know, that, that's part of our operations and we do need to maintain them. We need to get the salt and uh, the dirt and everything yep. off of them. This is an area that is regulated. Um, as far as to what you can and can't yeah. put down your drains. 
Um, so this new uh, facility or washdown area, and I like to use it called an area because that's what it would be, a designated area that would be undercover that would have the ability to get high, so uh, a scaffolding system that's designed so that you can get and wash from the top down. Um, it would include uh, basically, um, you know, the area drain that would catch it, uh, the water uh, systems you need to spray down the vehicles. Uh, this is not, you know, a high flutant car wash by any means. This is a wash down facility. It would be large enough. Uh, for all our big trucks, uh, police, fire, um, it would be the length uh, of a bay. That photo that oh, yeah. Ben's got on there. That's our current it's, facility. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. nondescript, but that's the, the hydrant that we have, uh, uh, aquarium water, and it's a fire hose attached to it. Yeah. And we currently take the fire hose and attach it to the sweeper on a daily basis, and then just turn it on full blast. And that's what we use to blow the sand out of it on a daily basis, sand and salt. It collects mm -hmm. on the ground. Then we use a backhoe to pick it up. So we're using mechanical means to, the water kind of seeps in, runs off, does its thing, and the rest of it we pick off the ground. It's a very uh, archaic. Yeah, that's good. I was going to say <laughs> low tech. Uh, it doesn't really meet yeah. and won't meet the uh, current standards. Uh, to the MS4 that's about to come out. So again, the, this drain that would collect all the wash down would bring it to the septic, the new septic yeah, um, receiving station, which has the right separators to get those grits and the oils and the greases out that you'd be uh, washing off the vehicles. The third part of this uh, was the internal recycling yard uh, piping. Uh, right now, and this picture is just hard to see, but right now you have uh, the flows coming from the Northeast Interceptor, the Church Street Station, West End flows, they all come in uh, before the Headworks building. Um, right now, this recycled water is also coming in there. So if you're thinking about true influent readings, well, it's not because it's water that was already there that keeps going around and around. Mm -hmm. So when uh, DES was here uh, with the administrative order quite some time ago, this was one of the items they identified. Uh, th that should be looked at um, in our in our planning. Uh, so now, uh, looking at this again, because you'll have all these trades uh, on site, because the internal uh, recycling yard piping is what feeds the existing septage, this would be the time now to get it out from there and enter it after the Headworks building. Um, it would include uh, the flow meter and the associated programming that would go back to the SCADA system. So it is a complete package for the piping um, to be redone. The other part of this uh, is a valve pit project. Uh, this one comes straight down to safety. Right now there's uh, manual operating valves in a pit uh, that are basically coming from the thickener and the clarifier drains. and you have to climb in there, it's closed, confined yeah. space. Uh, this would just, because again, the pipe fitters and everybody are going to be there, the piping uh, is going to be done. This it would install uh, six, 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 six valves. Yep, I thought I had it on there somewhere. Uh, six new valves, the programming of the SCADA system, um, and all the uh, control equipment that would go along with them. And then here it is. See, I got here before everybody fell asleep. Um, the aeration blower generator connection project. Uh, not sure if uh, everyone is aware or not, but part of our system is the aeration tanks. Those aeration tanks run on a lot of power. Mm -hmm. They are currently not backed up by emergency generator power. Yeah. They are what provides the secondary treatment yeah. that allows us to meet our permits. Um, we took a hard look. Mike has done a lot of paperwork. I believe you have even seen some come through here. Uh, we reached out to New Hampshire Emergency Management. There's a whole lot of letters in there. But uh, through a grant, uh, there is $100,000 yeah. uh, that they have offered towards this project. When Good. I say this project, and that's why I, I, it's sort of separating the aeration project um, that would go to help put in this new uh, emergency generator. And again, it's to keep up with the process. Summer is our highest demand because it's hot out. 
and you're also trying to make the bubbles to feed the bugs. Um, some of you may ask, well, don't we have a generator over there? It's not large enough mm. to, um, to, to operate these aeration basins. When the plant was originally built, it was not an operational standard of the state to have aeration on backup power. Right. Yeah. But the issue is that, like July, when it's very humid out and we need the most air, if we have a brownout or a power outage, mm. yeah. we're, we have a pending violation. We're going to be sending bugs and untreated waste out of the plant. Yeah. This is not enough air for the bugs to reduce the waste. That's when it really gets down to. So you've put all those projects together, and again, it, it was four, four and a half different projects, uh, and that's where you get the request for the sewer bond. Um, we've put in here, you know, at one point there's a thought, should they be individual warrant articles uh, where they all are so interconnected it made sense to do it as one? Uh, there is SRF funding available. We This project, the emergency generator project, uh, is on the current SRF funding list. Um, so there could be up to 20% loan forgiveness. Uh, we talked about the grant. And all these costs include the engineering design and construction. Good. So much shorter than last time, but there's the show. Good job. Questions, um, Mr. Waddell. And the basic thing you were saying is that if you do this all together, it's mm -hmm. going to save money. Yes, yeah, certainly mm -hmm. will. And do we know approximately a percentage of what the savings would be, or no? But something that we could look into. I mean, I think of it as if you have electricians already there, and each one of these components have an electrical component, you're not having them go and come back. Now, that's not to say that we're going to take on all four projects all at the same time, but it gives us leveraging power from a bid standpoint. I mean, there, there's multiple ways of looking at this to get those savings. It would save us, we wouldn't have to bid out, if we grouped them all together, we wouldn't have to bid out three different projects. We wouldn't have to bid, have three different front end documents prepared, three sets of technical specs. That's, uh, that's where I think we're saving. You get one contractor who learns our SCADA system, you know, type of thing, or is used to how all our stuff is wired, and he gets the other two. He doesn't have to learn it the other time if he's the lucky bid. And right now, going out to bond is a good, mm -hmm. it's a good deal. Yep. And there are SRF funds too. Yeah. So yes. They're yeah. going to help. Yeah. And so this is something you're in favor of, Mr. Bridal. Yes. I mean, obviously, uh, it's stuff that needs to get done. Uh, there, are, there are the uh, SRF funds as a Homeland Security grant to help pay for part of this. So um, I think it's, we should go after it. So. Mrs. Wolseley. Once more on the washdown part. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be not a fancy building, but enclosed. Yes. Right? So you're not running stuff through when it's messy out. And it will take the ladder truck. It'll take all our equipment. I want it to be able to, yeah, take a uh, so tra can, trash trailer truck. So you can take the dump trucks in and wash all the sand and salt out of them and all that wonderful stuff. And we won't have fire chief's vehicles rotting out underneath because they can't get to the salt underneath. We have got to do this. Got so that's to a do yes. it. Definitely. Mr. Bean. Just yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a clarification. Uh, this is 1.84 and change, and I thought I heard someone say that you get 20% funding. You have up to 20% loan forgiveness with the SRF funding. 20%, if it comes and in. then I heard $100,000. Someone else was going to for the in. Homeland Security Emergency Management Performance. So that grant drops this 1.8 down to 1.38. I support. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And Good I job. also support it. Great job, guys. Great job on that. Thank you. Um, I guess that's it. May, may I ask one quick question? Yes. Mike, is the air handling system finished in there? It's not completely finished. It's driving me crazy. It's driving you crazy. We got a no. target. Yeah. Help. It's coming. Coming. Yeah. When? So we installed a, uh, a carbon cartridge filter yeah. in line. Yeah. Which we had a uh, company come in and test the atmosphere in yeah. there, and it. 
it is a lot better than what is out I want there. You guys to be able to breathe. Yeah. So it, it tested very good with that carbon cartridge in there. Okay. But I'm looking to get a bigger unit in there, so we're not changing this cartridge out every 45 days. Okay. So that's what I'm waiting for. One more quote. To this come is in. a health situation, yeah. and that's got yeah. to get done. Yeah. And you're the man who can do it. Yeah. We'll get it done. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you. We really appreciate it. You did a great job. Thank, thank you. you. One more bid. One more bond. Uh, not no. is that a public right. works bond? No. 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 Oh. No. Oh. No. No. He said who? So uh, that's going to be part of other old business. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh oh. We have the deputy and town manager. James Sullivan. Good, Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. and gentlemen. Um, Thank you, sir. So, what I was asked to uh, put together, if you recall, during our goal setting session, um, there was a, a discussion about a bond. Uh, or a, a project about acquiring a property down in the marina. So I was asked to put that together, and I want to start off by thanking uh, our town planner, Jason, for uh, helping me put this together and um, envision some of those. So what this was is sort of a big picture thing. Uh, as you recall, the board had some discussion. One of the members was, con was offered this out and said, what would a vision be to acquire the property down at the Hampton Marina, and how would that benefit our community? So I put together this to give us kind of a view of some of that. Why acquire the property? Uh, for recreational purpose. You can uh, uh, secure access for our citizens now and in the future to the ocean by way of the river. Uh, provide recreational access and the potential for some public uh, future and private development possibilities down along that area. Um, here is an aerial shot of that uh, location uh, along the marsh. You can see the, the property. The next is just a quick drawing that, that uh, Jason helped mark up of What's the potential that we could do with that property if we acquired it for these purposes? Drawing in, you'll see the colored areas, some park, uh, open space, green space, the ability for folks to access down there to kayak, bird watch, to, you know, just get out and visit a, an area. The town of Hampton owns only a, a small area of really publicly accessible uh, oceanfront. This is a separate area. We'll be back by the marsh and give the opportunity to take advantage of some of those uh, water uh, uh, views and the water access uh, for recreational purposes. Some examples of other places that have done this. Uh, I get the chance to visit the National Harbor property in Maryland, obviously a much larger property, but gives some ideas. Here's an aerial shot of that where you can see some of the piers down further. There's a marina as well. There's water taxis that take folks along the river into D.C. or up to Mount Vernon where they need to go. Um, obviously, that's a major project. Here they have a, a park down along the front uh, for citizens to visit. It was, it was quite an experience to be down and looked at it. This is an example of a, um, a children's park down there with sort of artificial sand and sculpture and artwork. There's a huge TV screen down there that they run. Nationals baseball games as folks are wandering around down there in the day, uh, you know, in an astroturfy kind of a park there for folks to sit. It's a very beautiful area. Uh, all along that river area, there's a walking path area for folks to go along and enjoy the views and get exercise. Um, here's a couple other shots of that, what those parks look like. Here's some others across the country. San Diego on the left, San Diego State Park. Um, again, meanders down along the water, riverfront area. Uh, Portland, Oregon with a little less developed, but an area for folks to walk along the river down there. And again, Seattle, Washington. So quick in summary, uh, how would we do this? Obviously, it's a government acquisition uh, uh, through the eminent domain process, purchase the property, and the plan for future development. Uh, currently, the Warren article projects a, a cost based on uh, the current uh, assessed value. The law would guide how that eminent domain process would uh, take place in order to acquire a property in such a manner. And that's really the end of, of the quick slideshow I had for you on that. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Questions? Um, did you want to start with this, though? Uh, I'm happy to offer some comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think this is uh, obviously an idea whose time has come for discussion in this town. And if you um, 
Pico is, is close to, uh, to the South Shore in Massachusetts. The town of Hingham is buying uh, the Hingham Harbor. Uh, they're also looking at uh, buying an aquarium. And they're, uh, they're concerned about access for their citizens, their denizens. Uh, in the town of Hampton, of course, I wasn't here in 33. Maybe some of you guys were. Um, but uh, the state took the beach. And that, that must have been an interesting, uh, an interesting heist. Uh, and they still have it, and we don't have access to that. And they rule the roost, and they tell us what to do, and uh, we support that operation down there to uh, the tune of about a million and a half bucks a year. We've uh, spent 17 million bucks to support that infrastructure development they did. And so um, we're on our own. We go to the North Beach, and there's absolutely uh, very minimal parking. Tourists are down there. It requires manpower to uh, um, keep tourists out of there so residents can, can uh, recreate in that one little spot. And there's virtually nothing else left. The west side um, of Ashworth Avenue is a dynamic and dramatic natural uh, resource area that's equally as valuable as the uh, eastern side that the state owns and the recreational opportunities that come along with this and where this can go with some perhaps rezoning so it's all business seasonal down there where you can uh, know the fact that your children if they're not going to be able to afford it you can't afford oceanfront living um, there's this beautiful park and jamie did a great job in spooling this up in an, in an initial salient that uh, they can learn how to sail that uh, the town would have real estate rights there that uh, future generations of Hampton kids can do what many of us have done, gone down here and jump up the Smith and Gilmore Pier and uh, <laughs> swim in that harbor and, and uh, exploit opportunities, parasail, scuba dive, uh, swim, and, and really enjoy yourselves. There is talk down on that, that beautiful south end of the beach where people struggle um, in the off season, and they talk about attracting business down there, and they're, they've got you know their livelihoods. They've got their their uh, their banknotes supporting their their commercial interests. There's a gentleman that just came back from California, and I was talking to someone at uh, a coffee shop, and he said we've got to have piers, and what better place to put it in a protected area? And the piers are already there. The marina's there. The boat slips are there. So um, where it goes from here forward, I don't know. But I think uh, much of much of town government is always about compliance, rightfully so, with the DES and compliant with this and we have to do this and Concord and, and the federal government tell us what to do. And we can strike out on our own and um, going forward on this, whether it takes a year, two years, three years, we simply acquire a magnificent asset forever in perpetuity uh, that we never have to relinquish for, for uh, the, the denizens of Hampton. And it will increase our uh, tax values, it will increase that that uh, battle rhythm down there on the west side uh, of Ashworth Avenue, which is is a, such a sleeper, and we're so blessed to have that. And we look at uh, we look at the revenue that's been created from the beach and that real estate trust fund. It's gold down there. And now, whether you support using that money as I do or you don't, uh, it speaks to how valuable that real estate is and the the benefits that come along from ownership. And operation of that, and I think we ought to we ought to look at it strongly. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, would there be ways to bring money in to the town by having this, like with the marina or whatever? Yeah, I, I believe there are. There's certainly some revenue opportunities there. I mean, I, I you know, clearly have to explore this through the legal process of how you acquire that in the eminent domain. The primary focus would be on that recreational purpose for you know the town's use, uh, but there certainly are some commercial opportunities down there as well. And Mr. Waddell, I think it's a good discussion to start, uh, and I think I think it needs a lot of planning, you know, to go into it. And I think it needs a lot of uh, uh, input from both public and private. And I think you know, ideas of how it could be revenue producing also are good. But I, I think it's a great idea to start the discussion, start the planning, start thinking about it. Mr. Bridal, I think it's something we should let the voters decide. I think it's. Uh, the potential is there to have a um, a nice area for the people of this town uh, that will pay for probably a good possibility. It's going to pay 
maybe not a whole thing, but a mo majority of it will be paid for by what's what funds can be generated off it, and it gives the people of this town an opportunity to to get the place. I grew up on that river. I jumped off Smith and Gilmore's piers, and <laughs> <laughs> I went to many clam bakes that were held at the marina itself. Um, that they used to have a long time ago. They used to have a, a park area down the end, and they used to have townspeople used to use that area down there. Uh, and I'd like to see that again. Mrs. Wolseley. Where does eminent domain come in? Is that property now freed up so that that's a possibility? Where, where, I, that well, eminent domain is always a possibility in a government take, and that's one of the problems with with the discussion we're having. It is currently a private property owned that would have to be a taking for a legitimate purpose under the eminent domain. And I'll defer to Fred for, you know, specific questions on it. But that's essentially, that's a big, that's a big deal. That's a yeah. big deal we're talking yeah. about. Then again, this is a visioning thing of what could it be coming forward for the recreational purpose. And I think that's our focus of where we need to be on it. I have one more quick question, because I, I would, that just caught my eye, because I sure, thought absolutely. that was kind of an interesting yeah. concept. Uh, the location, and I can't tell you how many feet above sea level, but I have seen the projected drawings from some of the UNH professors and some of the studies who show that whole end of the beach by 2050 or so underwater. And I don't know, the Hampton Marina has already been to the planning board and zoning board a couple of years ago to raise their parking lot and put in more gravel and stuff because they were going underwater. So the location scares me a little bit, right down at that end of the beach. Do you have, do we have any idea how high that is above sea level or? I don't as I sit here tonight, no. Because I, because the, the water rising is what would mm -hmm. concern me. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Walsh, is is this going to be uh, like a advisory, or? I think that depends upon how the board feels. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> we're suggesting that you need to look at eminent domain if you're going to purchase, for two reasons. Uh, one, there is an established process, a very detailed mm -hmm. legal process to go through <clears throat> in order to acquire title. <clears throat> The second reason, and probably the most important, is it wipes out all prior claims that could come against the property in the future from past owners or mm -hmm. past people or right. any obligations or debts from anybody. It clears the title completely so you, the town doesn't have an opportunity, if they decide to do this, doesn't have to um, watch their back all the time. Mm -hmm. the, the title will be completely cleared, everything wiped off. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we talk about eminent domain in a situation like this. And it's just that green area that you show us on. on no, that's uh, the area that you see in that in that visual. I'm sorry, I shut that off. But if you see uh, uh, what's in front of you, there's two uh, shots. One's an aerial of the properties that sits today. Yeah, that's kind of blurry. But yeah, I was a, looking uh, but at I, this. I apologize. The second one with the green. That's yeah. just. It's essentially the same photograph we looked at. That's. It's just uh, some of that green etching in is one variant of uh, what our plan to put together in a short basis so what could we do down there what could it look like but the extent of the property is if you see the blue highlighted yeah. um, at the, the bottom of that that's really the end of fellows I think fellows Ave down there okay. um, as it turns down on a Harris um, and then the rest of that property runs out towards that water if you follow the green line and the blue lines that's essentially along the property line there okay and, and it's that area out to the blue back to the green and yeah. out to the water from there yeah. gotcha yeah this one is about the clearest one that yeah 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 So, what are we, are we, what are we going to need to take a vote here for? Uh, as to whether or not you wish to proceed to um, put an article in the warrant to do something about this potential. Okay. I see you have a couple of options just from, from putting it forward. The, the number that's been generated so far, you could put a warrant article now and, and decide you want to move it as a bond article onto the warrant now. Well, we can, you know, put it off to future discussions. It begins the vision, right. and it begins the discussion, and we can approach it in that manner. That's really the choice the board has today. I'm, I'm personally in favor of starting a vision in a, in a discussion and not putting a warrant article out yet. That's my, my feeling. For a warrant article that has any value to it, you're saying? I, I'm just... Mm -hmm. A value amount. But are you in favor of... I'm not sure I understand it. Do we are we looking to have a advisory warrant article? 
you don't even need to put a warrant article on. That's really the your right. choice you're making. Do you want to pursue it now as a warrant article with this number, in which case you would vote to move it forward with the number that's been proposed currently? So how much is the number? 4.2? Yeah, I think, Fred, do you have the number? 4.2 right million. Yeah. yeah. That's what the assets valuation yeah. is. Now, if that was bonded out, how long would that bond be? 20 years. Well, it could be shorter, but the 20 right. years is the normal standard. Right. You could go, I believe you can go as far as 30, but that would be unusual. So let's ask it this way. Who's in favor of this $4.2 million bond? Mr. Wardell. No, not at this point. Mr. Bridal. I could be, yes. Okay, S Mrs. Wolseley. No. I'd, I'd, like I'd like to come back uh, to this issue uh, next week. Okay. And, uh, think about it. And, 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 and think about it for a week. Jason, Fred, and uh, Town Esquire, and Jamie, and uh, Jamie's quarterback, and that's a great job. Um, and uh, um, talk to uh, John Nyan, HBAC, talk to some of the folks in the chamber, mm -hmm. um, get the stakeholders down there, get everyone involved. And we don't want to be premature and uh, mm -hmm. right. um, ask no for the 4.2. There's yeah. a lot, lot right. going on. But uh, work this, and then perhaps next year, I think, mm -hmm. would be a good time to, um, with the, the I's yep. dotted, the T's crossed, Jim's got some good points, that yep. we come forward yep. with something really strong. I, I would say we even put that out a little further than next week. I mean, if the board decides, and, and I agree, I think it's premature on the number, That's frankly, fine. personally, That's right fine. now. Good mm -hmm. point. But good I point. think having meetings and discussions to see what's the community feel in this. Mm -hmm. is, yep. This is the initial pop to you. The first thing is, do you think it's worth pursuing or no that's really the first thing I'd say for the board to decide yeah. and if it's pursuing I would suggest we take a timely move forward because there's obviously many other things that need to be worked through here yeah. um, this was a big picture big vision for a swipe at it I would suggest we move yeah. that forward there's no need to rush it what does the community feel we'll have some forums bring those folks the stakeholders in but if that's the board's wishes if it's not then we stop here and we will move on to the next piece of business that's really I think the best way for the board to move forward. Fine with me. There's no sense in putting something like this up unless you can make a detailed explanation to the public. I, agree. I, I don't believe we're ready for that. This is a vision thing right. to say. I think it's a big picture. Remember, it was on your goals to have the discussion. This is the first one. And the first blush, it seems to me there seems to be a, a consensus that you're interested in exploring the idea further. Yeah. And I would suggest we, you got a busy budget period. Let's push it off. Let's schedule it out. Mm -hmm. Agree with those stakeholders to schedule some meetings with HPAC and other folks okay. and move it into the next year. Can could we incorporate into this looking looking process some information perhaps from UNH and so forth on their projections Absolutely. on yeah. the uh, ocean rise? Yeah, all very good questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We thank appreciate you, Jamie. It. You That's great. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate it. Any other old business, Mr. Waddell? No. Mr. Bridal? Nope. Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, really quickly, the 2014 audit. We haven't received it as I of yet. I haven't received yeah. it because I checked with Christy, but right. when are we going to get it? Relatively soon. They're just about finished with it. I know that Christy has been on the phone with them. Um, the holdup has been the uh, GASPI requirements, yeah. and we're just about finished with those. So, uh, and you know, we all know how important that is. Right. Uh, but we will we will have it probably in the next 10, 15 days. Now, Christy said that we would get copies. You will get report copies. Prior to the auditors coming in. Yes, you will Because I asked her if <clears throat> when the auditors come in, they can explain both to us and the public the ramifications of the GASB 34 and 45 so that we understand what they did. Right. Normally, what happens here is they issue their report because they have to issue it to a number of agencies as well right. at the same time. So you'll have it in advance. Uh, you'll have probably a week to look at it, and they'll be coming in to visit with you after that. Because my concern is we need that audit to figure out the unassigned fund balance at the end of 2014 coming into this year, and we're going to have to have a pretty close calculation on the unassigned fund balance at the end of this year so that we know where we're going with a lot of these articles. Well, I can tell you that the figure that Christy gave you earlier Right. came from the auditors. That portion of the, of the, of the uh, audit is done. And that $5 million less the four, four, $500,000, we're talking round figures now. Right. We don't have an exact figure less on a piece of paper. That it we... leaves us $4,500,000 in the unreserved fund balance okay. as it stands right now. Okay. 
assuming that people pay their taxes on time and all that. So. Uh, has, that's not part of the assumption. That's that we're talking about appropriations and not okay. tax payments. Okay. So there is that difference. So mentally, you figure four point five. Four point five. That's the round figure. Rounded. Okay. And, and we'll have an exact figure for it when okay. they issue that. I appreciate that. It just seems like it's taking forever. Moving on to new it business. <laughs> um, we've done all the bond issues. Yes, sir. Okay. Number two is 2015 snow plowing and removal. Mr. Chairman, we put this out to bid as we do every single year, and it seems that we're more than in a rut because every single year there's only one bidder, uh, and that's simply because everybody's out using the state contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and uh, in this particular case, uh, we we do have a singular bidder, and and uh, their yeah, bids, so. yeah, Jamco, and their bids are within last year's tolerance limits. Mm -hmm. um, we would request that the board make the approval on the basis of the waiver of uh, section 718-4A uh, and 718-4 subsection B2 uh, because there were less than three bidders. And uh, we, we would like to, um, we'd like to have somebody available when it does mm -hmm. hopefully not snow. If and when. So moved. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Um, any other new business? Mr. Waddell? No. Mr. Bridal? Nope. Mrs. Wolsey? Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. Thank you. Moving on to closing comments. None. And so. are we having any? Um... No? We're just meeting afterwards. None. Okay. Oh, okay. Is Anyone well, want to make a motion? 2110. Out. Oh. Adjourned. Second. All those in favor, <laughs> unanimous. Thank you.